The dawn brings a second chance. Life in the Winter Court of Alfhelm was hard. It was the domain of the true Archfey Morgan, the Lady of Eternal Frost. And it was by her law that her people rely only on their own talents and instincts to survive. Such things as kindness and generosity only served to benefit the weak, who had no place in her realm. It was survival of the fittest above all else. For Grimm and Ayla Givre, this was no issue. Both were strong examples of a winter court satyr. Grimm boasted raw physical strength which even the most fierce predator feared, while Ayla could conjure deadly storms and near-perfect illusions. The two had lived their lives in accordance with Morgan's laws. Even after losing child after child to illness, frostbite, and Alderwolf attacks. Then Fame was born. For three beautiful years, Fay brought Ayla and Grim hope. She had been the first child of theirs to survive so long. This time maybe they could have a family. Of course, life is rarely so kind. Kindness, after all, only benefits the weak. By her fourth birthday, Faye had fallen ill, like so many of her siblings before her. And her parents knew how this story ended. As the biting winds twisted outside, Grimm came home from that day's hunt to find Ayla hadn't moved from her knelt position of the infant Faye's bed gaze fixed upon the child, willing her better in a silent prayer. Has there been any change? What do you think? Ayla spun around with those words, the venom poorly masking her pain. My love, we know how this ends. We shouldn't let her suffer. We have lost too many children. I will not sit idly again as we lose another, and I won't even begin to acknowledge the suggestion that she dies by our hands as some kind of mercy. There is nothing else we can do. We are not healers, and nobody would dare offer their aid as long as we live under Morgan's rule. If there was anything to do, we would have done it long before, dear Fay. Then we won't live under Morgan's rule. What? We leave. We take our girl, and we leave. We go to one of the other courts. We find someone who will help us. Help our daughter. I will not lose another child. My love, what you're saying? You'd have us simply walk out of Morgan's realm into the hands of one of her sisters. I would. She lives, Grim. Nothing else matters. They did as Ayla said, bundling their fay in warm furs and gathering what supplies they had. The three of them left their home, rushing through the snowfall that forever fell across the land. But leaving their court was not as simple as moving house in the mortal realms. The denizens of a court were all intrinsically connected to the land from which they hailed, a connection that fuels their very life force. As Ayla and Grimm ventured further, soon enough the snowfall gave way to rain. And then to clear and warm skies. The ice and frost melting away to lush grassland and flower blossoms. Their determination to leave, to seek aid for their child in another court kept them going. As the colour drained from their bodies, their innate magic and strength fading as well. Only the most able-bodied could continue onward without a connection to their court. And while Ayla and Grimm had that strength enough to keep pushing forward, their daughter Faye grew worse. Her colour drained much like her parents, and her breath began to fade with it. My love, we're losing her! We're almost there! The two rushed to the center of this domain, marked by the palace that shined like the sun, the home of Titania, the Archfey Queen of this realm, and widely regarded as one of the most powerful true Archfey 
in all of Elfham. Surely, if anyone could heal their daughter, it was her. As they reached the palace, they could both feel their own heartbeats begin to slow. They were so close, and neither of them would let it end this way. As the pair of guards at the front gate stepped forward to intercept, Grim's desperation turned to rage, and in a flash, the guards went up to side. Bestial strength tossing their armoured bodies through the air as the two continued towards the palace doors. We've no time to waste with you! We're here to see your queen! Crashing through the doors to the main atrium, Ayla began to call out for help. Please, we need to speak with Titania. We'll give anything. We need her help. It wasn't long before they were swarmed by the palace guards, the commotion drawing all within earshot. Grim took a stance in front of Ayla, but his strength only faded further. Dealing with the two guards out front had only tipped the exhaustion to its end. For a moment, it seemed like all was over their failure coming just a few steps from the finish line. Then the doors to the throne room open. Why is there such a commotion in my home? Stepping out from behind the doors was truly one of the most beautiful people one could imagine. Their skin glistened like silver, and their braided hair shined like gold parted by a crown of magnificent twisting horns. Their gowns seemed to be made of vibrant leaves and vines that had grown naturally around their body, and unfurling behind them were a pair of large, butterfly-like wings, burned with the heat of a sun. Titania, the radiance of the skies. You are not mine, are you? Your Majesty, we- I have no time to deal with strays. I suggest you return to your court, if there's even enough of you left to do so. With that, Titania turned her back, and began to walk back through the doors, before Ayla called out. Please! This is not for us! Our daughter needs help! She's dying! She stopped. Her wings fluttered briefly, before her face peered back from behind the door. Did you say, daughter? Faye awoke after a few days, tucked into a warm bed in an unfamiliar room. Her parents sat beside her. They looked different, their fur and hair warmer, browns and oranges, rather than their off-white colorations. As she looked down, she saw her own fur was different too. Her confusion was soon forgotten as her parents saw her awake, rushing over to cuddle her and stroke her head. Mama? Where are we? We're somewhere safe, my snowflake. You were sick. But you're better now. Can we play? Not right now. You still need to rest. But soon we can play whatever games you want for as long as you want. Rest now, my child. We love you, Faye. I love you, Mama. I love you, Papa. As Faye laid back down and closed her eyes once more, the two of them simply stood for a moment and watched their daughter fall asleep. Watched her breath. Watched as her eyelids fluttered with dreams. They didn't hear Titania come in at first, but the Queen simply waited for them to notice before speaking. Have you said your goodbyes? We have. It has to be both of us. I have been able to sustain you three for a short time, but you are all diminished from leaving your court. If you wish for her to live, it will take both of your remaining essences to restore her. I am sorry that you won't be able to be with your daughter, but you have my word as queen that Faye will always have a home here. She will be loved for all her days. She will grow into a strong woman and do your memories justice. Then there's nothing more to say. 
With that, Titania ushered Ayla and Grim out of Fay's room, each taking one last look at their daughter before leaving her to a better life. Faye woke once more, her room now empty. Mama? Papa? Almost instantly, the door to her room opened and Titania stepped in. <laughs> You're awake, my child. Did you sleep well? Where's my mama? Titania crouched down to meet the child's gaze. Her warm smile showed the faintest hint of a frown at the edges of her lips. I am sorry, my dear, but your parents have gone away. They won't be back for quite a while, but they left you in my care. And I promise, you'll be safe here, and we'll play all you want. I want to play with Mama and Papa. They can't play with you right now, my child. They'll be gone for some time. If you don't wish to play with me right now, that's okay. I understand this news will be difficult. I'll leave you to process this, but I'll be right outside if you need me, dear. Titania stood up and left the room, leaving Faye alone. Alone. The child's distress only grew. She wanted her parents. She didn't know this place. She didn't know this woman. She wanted to go home. The dawn brings a second chance. The next thing Faye remembered was running out into a forested city surrounding the palace. The cacophony of all the creatures around her talking, shopping, laughing. It was more noise than she'd ever heard before. Tears streaming down her face, she ran into a small alley path, not looking where she was going until the light suddenly vanished in the shadow of two elven figures that blocked her path. Whoa there, young one! Where are you going in such a rush? Where are your parents? They sniffled as she looked up at the two silhouettes that loomed over her. I don't know. M -m -m Mama and Papa are gone. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, why don't you come with us? We'll help you find your parents. Right, Care? Oh, of course. In fact, I think I saw two lovely people who looked just like you heading through the rift to Eleanor. Why don't we show you? Mm. Okay. The young Fay took the stranger's hands as they walked her to the outskirts of the court, to a large, natural, tree-woven archway where the veil between Alfhelm and the mortal realm was the thinnest. The further Fay got from the palace and the rest of the summer court, she began to slow down. Ah, oh, don't fret, little one. Your parents are so close. Ah, oh, you can see them through the veil there if you look hard enough. Faye shuffled forward, the veil shifting like a translucent sheet in the mild breeze. The wild expanse of the summer court forests behind flickered and faded into images of a bustling city. Large towers piercing up into the sky, which bore such a dull color compared even to the winter court. As she went to take a step closer, she suddenly felt as a hand grasped her mouth to stop her from screaming, and a sack was quickly thrust over her head, and the elves grabbed her and forced her through the veil. For days, Faye was left alone in a cold and wet stone room, rough cloth and burlap binding her arms and her eyes. She could hear voices from time to time, the elves speaking with strangers, customers, people looking to buy assistants or servants for their homes. Eventually she heard the door open to her room. Whoever it was hadn't spoken yet. She flinched as large, calloused hands grabbed her by the horns and pulled her to her feet, turning her head sharply from side to side before dropping her back on the ground. The footsteps left the room, and she heard the sounds of coins being exchanged, as another person entered and pulled the cloth from her eyes. It was a woman, elderly and human. Her hands were worn, 
and her face was twisted downward like she'd never smiled before. But she was gentle with Faye, almost apologetic in the way she moved. Here you are, little one. Let's get you to your new home. It's not far. I want my mama. <laughs> oh, I know, dear. I'm sorry. I'm sure this must seem scary, but we'll get you settled in and helping out with the rest of us in no time. Hush now. The Lord prefers we not speak unless spoken to. And yet I don't recall speaking to either one of you. Bring it. Now. Faye was escorted from the building. The elves already gone from view as the strangers brought her out into the thoroughfares of the city she'd seen through the veil before. In almost no time at all, she was brought into a large manor house, dimly lit by fireplaces, and with a stench of alcohol that threatened to ignite at a moment's notice. Show it where it will be sleeping and working. I trust that's within your ability. Yes, my lord. Come now, child. Quickly. Esther took Faye through the kitchen into a small combination bedroom slash storage cupboard. Roughly sewn bedrolls sat beneath precarious shelves of salves, herbs, water pails, washcloths and the like. This was the home that Esther spoke of. Over the next few days, Esther taught Faye to cook, to clean, to wash clothes. All the skills she'd need to serve under the Lord. Aglavan. Soon enough, the Lord came to assess her ability, the infant Fae trying her best with Esther's guidance. When she had finished her tasks, Lord Aglavan came over and crouched down to Fae, holding out his hand. As Fae reached hers out too, he suddenly snatched her arm and pulled her in close. Hold still! He grabbed her horns again and wrenched her head upwards as he affixed a cold metal collar to her neck. Faye fell away and shook, tears beginning to well up. Let me explain your situation, creature. You belong to me now. That collar ensures it. You cannot leave without my presence. You cannot sleep without my permission. And only I can remove it. If you so much as pull on that too hard, you'll feel a worse pain than you could ever imagine. Pure, sourceless pain. Do you understand? Before Faye could answer, he hooked a finger under the collar and yanked. <coughs> as Faye for a moment only saw white. All sound vanished into a piercing ring as her body felt like it was on fire. The Lord stood back up, leaving the child sobbing on the floor as he wiped his hands with a handkerchief. Faye remained in the servitude of Lord Aglavan for years, growing through adolescence into adulthood as she lived through day after day of endless work and drunken abuse from the man. Shortly after Faye had turned 18, Esther passed away, leaving her the sole victim of that vile man. More years passed and he only got worse. No family or friends to occupy his time, he spent it at the taverns only returning home to vomit on the floors and to throw Fay against the walls and furniture on his way to sleep off the latest bad decision. One night, he came home worse than usual, stinking of ale, vomit, and blood, yelling barely coherent demands at Fay. Sto stoke the fire! Bring me my evening meal! Don't you look at me, you- He didn't make it to the last word before reeling over the side of his chair to vomit once more, as Faye shuffled over to begin lighting the fireplace. She didn't hear him approach, only realising he was standing above her as he grabbed the fire poker from beside her. You need to learn some respect! With a grunt, <laughs> the Aglavan kicked Faye, knocking her across the room and causing some of the coals to come loose, tumbling onto the carpet as embers began to catch. Faye desperately tried to bat the coals away, but the damage was done. The fine and expensive rug now forever tainted by a tiny blackened mark. I bring you into my home. I give you shelter. I give you purpose. He kicked one of the coals at Faye as he stormed over to her, striking her in the head. You ungrateful little wretch! 
Fay cried out in pain as Lord Aglavan swung at her with the fire poker, a fresh trail of blood snaking its way down her face as she recoiled from her assailant. No, please, sir. I'll fix it. I'll- He hit her again. And again, all the while screaming vitriol at her. You dare talk back to me, you animal! A clatter followed the last blow from the poker, as did a throbbing pain in Faye's head, as she squinted through the blood dripping from her face to see her horn on the ground, freshly broken off from the impact. She expected even more blood to flow, but instead she felt a chill, as thin wisps of icy mist poured from the horn stump on her head. So, is this the life your parents sacrificed everything for? Lord Aglavan continued to strike her, oblivious or uninterested in the broken horn. It was unclear at this point if he intended to kill her here, or was simply too drunk to care, or even realize what he was doing. Well... Was this worth turning your back on who you are? Your home? I didn't... No... She could only barely choke out the word as the pain rang through her. Is this the fate you've resigned yourself to? Is this your choice? No! She cried out, loud enough now to be heard by Lord Aglavan. The chill now permeated her whole body as frost began to form around the horn stump. Her very soul felt like it was ice cold. She felt her fingers twitch as if trying to grasp something that wasn't there. Do not speak to me! Each word punctuated with another strike of the fire poker. But Faye couldn't feel it anymore. Good. Then we're in agreement. Once more, Faye felt a twitch. It's like there was something in her hand. But it was empty. Without thinking, she grasped at the air and felt purchase. Her body moved on its own as she swung out with whatever she had grabbed, crying out in pain, <laughs> fear, and anger. The beating stopped. Silence for only the briefest moment before she then heard gurgling and the dripping of more blood than her own. Finally, daring to look, she saw Lord Aglavan on his knees as a thick sheet of blood poured from his neck, his eyes bulging as he stared at her, and the brilliant gleaming sword that was now in her hand. Consider this weapon a gift, a tool to forge your freedom, and should you call upon the power within yourself again, simply speak more name, Kernonos, and I shall be there. She didn't move. She simply sat there, watching the life drain from his eyes. This cruel, horrible, disgusting man. Finally he was gone, and she felt... nothing. As she gathered the strength to stand up, she moved over to him, the rug squelching under her feet as the blood leaked out from it. She brought his lifeless hand up to the collar on her neck, and pressed his thumb up to the clasp as it came off, with a click, the sound almost deafening in the silence that filled the room. Faye knew all that mattered right now was escape. People will have heard the noise, the screaming. They knew her, they knew her master. She had to move now, while she had the cover of night, before the city guards swarmed the manor. She had to leave. She could leave. As she rushed away to the door, there was a moment of hesitation. Burned into her mind were countless memories of debilitating pain for simply nearing the threshold without her owner. She reached out slowly and grasped the handle. And as she turned it, almost immediately, a cold breeze swept in. And Faye swept out. The dawn brings a second chance.